fellow said to me one time, he said, Ruckman, he said, you Baptists are narrow-minded. You think uh, nobody's going to get to heaven but Baptists. I said, we're more narrow-minded than that. We don't think even some of the Baptists are going to make it. <laughs> I'm as much more narrow-minded than you think. Paul said, the way to get to heaven is what I'm going to tell you now, and you better listen to it, because if a man tells you none of the way, he's under a curse. Now, what did he, what did he tell him? Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. All right, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to have you see what the same writer, that's Paul, wrote him. Now, nobody's taking anything out of context. Nobody's misrepresenting anything. Uh, Nobody is trying to take something and prove something that isn't so. That's the same writer. The one who wrote Galatians wrote uh, 1 Corinthians. The one who wrote 1 Corinthians wrote Galatians. Well, the one that said, if any man preach on the gospel of that, then let God curse him. Now, what was he preaching? Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and come down there above verse 3, 4, and 5. And he says, of the gospel I delivered unto you is how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day from the dead according to the Scriptures. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel is that Christ died for your sins. He died, that's negative. For your sins, that's negative, according to the Scriptures. And was buried, that's negative. And the third day he rose from the dead, that's positive. The gospel is 75% negative. Got that? You never get that listening to average radio or television program. You get the idea it's God so loved the world, positive, he gave his only begotten son, positive, and whoever believes on him, positive, should not perish, negative, but have everlasting life, positive. That ain't it. John 3.16 is a, a capsule statement of the whole operation. Paul didn't get up and stand and say, for God so loved the world, he got up and said, Christ died for your sins. A fellow said to me one time, he said, I preach, I preach about sin, but behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, but he said, I don't preach about sins. Well, I said, if you don't preach about sins, you're not preaching the gospel. And he said, how do you figure? I said, the Bible says Christ died for our sins. If a preacher not preaching about sins, he's not preaching the gospel. All right, Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures and was buried, and the third day he rose again from the dead according to the Scripture. Wherefore he is able to save to the uttermost all them that come unto God by him, seeing he have a liberty to make intercession for them. So the Lord Jesus Christ died, and Christ died for sinners. Now Paul said, if any man tells you there's any other way to get to saving that, then let God damn him. Let God curse him. And that's Paul's opinion of the matter, and I'm not going to argue about it. Folks say Christ came in the world to reconcile institutions. No, he didn't. Folks say Christ came in the world, you know, to take care of folks and bring everybody together. And no, he didn't. Christ died for sinners. And if it's not according to the Scripture, then let God curse the guy. Now, this thing I'm going to draw you here this morning is the two things about it. First of all, it's called good news. That's what the word gospel means, good news. And secondly, this thing I'm going to draw you about here is a love story. I, when I mentioned uh, John 3.16 a while ago, I didn't mean to demean it. It's true. But that doesn't give you the detail of the gospel. The uh, truth is, God did so love the world, He gave His only begotten Son. The truth is, here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and gave His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. The truth then is, not that we love God, but that He loved us. The truth is, greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friend. But God commendeth His love towards us, and that while we were commendeth His love towards us, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's a love story. Now, you'd think anybody as love crazy and as sex nutty as Americans are, would be interested in something about love, wouldn't you? And yet they'll take any love except this one. They like to talk about Wally and the Duke and Grace and the Gambler and Liz Taylor and who she's going to marry next and who gives a flip. Why, listen, the greatest love story in the world is not in Hollywood. You can pick up those little tabloids, Enquirer and Midnight, and those little dirt smut sheets, and somebody's dumping somebody every other year, man. Now you're true love at last. Oh, no, don't kid me. That was the last six times. <laughs> The greatest love in this world is the love of Jesus Christ for sinners. Now listen, you stop and consider this thing. You don't know anybody that loves you enough to die for you. You say, oh, so-and-so die for me. Yeah, but they don't know everything about you. Why, well, bless your heart, people. If, if your wife knew everything about you that God knows about you, she wouldn't stay in the same room with you. And if you men knew everything about your wife, God knows, God knows about your wife, you wouldn't have married her. He's supposed to go around saying, well, you just don't have all the facts. You just don't know what I know. If you just knew what I... 
I told Ada that one time. I said, if I know everything about God knows about if I know everything about you, God knows about you, I'd puke. <laughs> she didn't appreciate that a bit. I guess she thought she was exempt or something, you know. Lesson, lesson, people. Lesson, lesson. If you knew everything about me, God knows about me, you wouldn't sit there and watch me draw. And if I knew everything about you, God knows about you, I wouldn't waste my time to draw for you. And you know it. And you know it. And listen, if you think you're an exception, you ain't kidding nobody but yourself. I'll tell you two people, you're not kidding. You're not kidding me, you're not kidding the Lord. All this Holy Joe stuff. You ain't that holy. Nobody is. All right, this is a love story. Now, wouldn't you think if you found somebody loved you enough to die for your sins, wouldn't you think Americans would be interested in that? I mean, you can travel around this world all your life, and you'll find every love story in the face of this earth, there's an element of selfishness on the part of one or both parties. I don't care how great a love it is, true love and all that, there's always, you better listen, there's always an element of selfishness Amen. on the part of one party or the other party or both parties. Yeah. They always is. Somebody is always getting something for themselves in a human love story. I don't care who is involved with it, but there's one that's an exception. What could he get out of that from you? Nothing. Nothing. Just heartache, just sorrow, just pain, just suffering. Let me tell you young people sitting here this morning in this building, if you miss the love of Jesus Christ for sinners, you miss the greatest love story the world ever had to offer. If you miss God's love for you as a sinner, you miss the whole thing. The rest of it, it just comes and goes, you know. Now, I'm saved. I didn't say us, I said me. I'm saved man. He said, how do you know you're saved? I'm covered. I'm covered. You got any coverage? That's trouble with folks. Thinking this is going to save, not going to save. You ever get saved, you're going to be saved right there. You're going to go to hell like a bullet. You say, Brother Buckham, I'm a modern 20th century man. Don't give me that gaff. You got leather on your shoes. Animal shed blood for you to get the leather. You got a leather belt on. Animal holds up your waist. You say, I got a plastic belt. Don't kid me. You had breakfast meat for breakfast. Said I had no meat yet. You will for it. Don't kid me. Don't don't try to mess with me. You've had blood. You, you modern people. You're a bloody bunch. You're as a bloody bunch I've ever seen in my life. Take your nose and cut your nose off. You bleed like a stuck hog. Don't tell me you don't believe in blood for salvation. You know different people back in 4,000 B.C. or 3,000 B.C. or 2,000. You're the same bloody bunch. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Now, I'm not drawing you a pretty picture. The Bible says, with his stripes you're healed. They whipped him. God took mine, my sins and put him on him. Holes in his hands. Why? I picked up things I had no business picking up. Holes in his feet. What for? I went place I had no business going. You bet your life, amen, brother or sister. Crown of thorns in the forehead. Why? My sins of intellect. A spear in my heart. In his heart, from my heart, why? My sins of affection. Wrong affection, wrong thoughts, wrong deeds, wrong ways. Christ died for sinners. Bubba, I used to tell him if I could just find me a sinner, I'd have a good message for him. Trouble these days, you can't find any sinners. Well, you've got Catholics and Baptists and Buddhists and Taoists and Muslims and Confucianists and Absolutionists and... Listen, Christ died for sinners. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Paid for, thou shalt not steal. Paid for, thou shalt not bear false witness. Paid for, honor thy father and thy mother. Paid for, a high look and a proud heart and applying the wicked is sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Folks, it wasn't just a hole in the hand, a hole in the feet, and a hole in the side. They whipped him raw. He says, The plowers made long their furrows on my back. I hid not my face from the shame and the spitting. That's what he went through for you. How do some of you feel about it long about now? You got this service, you're going to shake my hand, look me in the face, and make me think you're a decent fella? When he did that for you, and you never did nothing for him? Aren't people strange? What have you ever taken like that? 
I tell people the worst enemy I had on this earth were to come to me and ask me to forgiveness. It might take me three seconds to handle it, but not much longer. I meant every word of what I'm saying. What he overlooked for me, I couldn't compute. I better overlook some things for him. I think so. Oh, on that dark and terrible day when Jesus Christ died in Calvary's cross for sinners, and that's why he came, that's why he died. I know you hear about it, you read about it, but it doesn't reach you. I've been over in Germany, I've been over in Austria, I've been up in Canada, I've been in Hawaii, I've been in Japan, I've been around. I wasn't born yesterday. I go to Germany, I see the crucifixes all over the place. Everybody knows the crucifix. It's got a dead Christ on it. I want to tell you something right now. My Christ is not on that cross anymore. It's up in glory, rose from the dead. I'll tell you something else. That crucified Christ will never do, do you any good until you see it was for you. Yeah. Amen. Oh, when Christ died in Calvary's cross in the midst of that thing there, the grace of God suddenly touched the heart of one of these criminals. And when it touched his heart, he turned to his companion in sin and said in so many words, Why don't you shut your mouth? He said, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And turning to Jesus, he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be within paradise. This thief over here turned to this one over here, and he said in so many words, We got what we had coming to us. We took a chance. We got caught. Lay off me. He's a good man. Shut your mouth. Amen. What a sermon. Amen, what a sermon. I wish God Almighty could cut the backbone out of that dying thief and put it into the backbone of every preacher in this country. He turned around and said, he's a good man, nothing wrong, get off his back. And then he turned to Jesus. And turning to Jesus, he said, Lord. You get that? He didn't say rabbi, he didn't say father, he didn't say doctor, he said, Lord. He said, Lord. What's your Lord? That's your God. That's, your, that's the, the thing that runs you. That's the thing that rules you. That's the thing that guides you. Some men carry it in the back pocket. Some men carry it in the shirt pocket. No fellow's got it in the car pocket. No fellow's waiting for a motor mobile. The thing that moves you and guides you, that's your God, and that's what will have to save you. Lord, remember me. Did you get that? Lord, remember me. Not remember my backslid next door neighbor, that money grabbing preacher, that cigar smoking steward, or that whiskey drinking deacon. Remember me. If you ever get saved, you have to get on your knees and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. It's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, stand in need of prayer. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the nearest way to me is through my mother's heart. There's Mary, pray to her. <laughs> well, don't you laugh, you irreverent people. <laughs> but you know he didn't say that. Somebody else put that one on you. And Mary was right there. That dying thief had more sense than half the people in America have. Why, Mary was right there. Why didn't he say, pray for me, Holy Mary, Mother of God? And I? Why, he had more sense than some of you got. Why, he turned that dying thief. You know what he said, that dying thief? He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, have the initial evidence of the baptism, shut your mouth, man. He never said nothing of the kind. He said, Remember me, and the Lord turned to him and said, Verily I say unto you, unless you confess and repent and believe and hold out to the end and endure to the end and don't fall from grace, you get that cockeyed stuff from him. That fellow couldn't do anything. He couldn't even kneel to pray. And he got saved. Are you saved? So that fellow couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So the fellow didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? <coughs> didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. Just like that. <laughs> you have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that. 
fellow said to me one time, he said, well, Ruckman, he said, I didn't, uh, I wanted to say it quickly, I just kind of grew up into the church. Well, I said, you may have grown up in the church, but you didn't grow up into Christ. Yeah. Amen. Listen, brother, sister, there came a time in your life when you passed from death to life and from darkness to light and from nighttime to daytime and from Satan to God. If that's ever happened in your life, you're not converted. Amen. Are you saved? See this fellow right here? He got sin in him, but there no sins on him. This is one in the middle. He got the sins on him, but there no sin in him. You see this one here? He dies in his sins with his sins on him. You know what this fellow's sins are? They're on Jesus Christ. Amen. Any man, woman, this building is a fool to pay for your sins when you don't have to pay for them. Yeah. They're taken care of right there, and if you go to hell and pay for your sins, you're doing the dumbest thing you could do in your life because you don't have to do it. 